After the Kenley Jansen signing, do the Atlanta Braves now have the best bullpen in all of baseball? Also, spring training action got underway over the weekend, and the Braves had several prospects that really shined. We'll discuss all that on today's episode of Locked On Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Lockdown Braves, brought to you by the Lockdown Podcast Network, where we talk about your favorite teams every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at Shortstop Ball. Check out my bio there to see everywhere I am covering the game of baseball, including the Atlanta Braves in written form over at TomahawkTake.com. Also, please make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at Lockdown underscore Braves and subscribe to the Lockdown Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast. Also, please make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube as well. We're really getting close to a thousand subscribers there on YouTube, trying to make sure you get that done before opening day. So really do appreciate the support there. And thanks for making Lockdown Braves your first listen each and every day. Post episodes daily, five days a week, Monday through Friday, and we are free and available on all platforms. Before we get into today's episode, let me remind you that this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. So it was a busy weekend for the Atlanta Braves. Friday night, got the news of the Kinley Jansen signing, which we'll obviously discuss today, and whether or not this makes the best bullpen in all of baseball. Also, who shined in the team's first three spring training games over the weekend had a ton of really good prospects that had some good weekends want to talk about and also AA continues to make some depth moves and there's some big moves around Major League Baseball as well and some of those moves involved uh, the Braves as well at least the Braves being interested in some of those big name free agents that I wanted to discuss but let's talk about this Kenley Jansen signing First of all, the Braves just sweeping in and getting somebody that's been with the Dodgers for their entire career. Kind of a familiar situation with what just happened last week with them signing Freddie Freeman, maybe not to the level of competition or player. Um, but one year, $16 million for Kenley Jansen. That is a high dollar amount uh, for a relief pitcher. Uh, they're already paying Will Smith $13 million, so... For AA to give up another $16 million on a reliever, that says something uh, about where the budget is or may, may be going. But certainly love the move. Uh, Kenley Jansen is a great pitcher, has been a great pitcher for a long time. 34 years old, he won't turn 35 until September. So essentially will be his age 34 season. He will be the new closer for the Braves. Um, I just mentioned Will Smith. Alex Antopoulos said that he spoke with Will Smith before making the signing to make sure he was okay with the role change. Will Smith said, just give me another parade. That's all he wants to win another World Series, whatever helps get that done. Which is great for him uh, to say that. Interesting that AA said he wouldn't have made the deal without Smith's approval. Uh, I thought that was kind of interesting, but glad to see that Will Smith was certainly on board with that. Likely moves him to you know an eighth inning role. Um, we'll see. We'll see how Will Smith gets used in all of this because at times I think Tyler Matzik, you know, is the better reliever in the Braves bullpen. At times you could even say AJ Minter is better than Will Smith, and that's no dig at Will Smith, who I think has been underappreciated uh, with the Braves, but also really good. It just speaks to the level uh, of this bullpen right now to have just so many options to go to. So many players now with uh, saves under their belt, a lot of saves under their belt that you can go to. But looking at Kenley Jansen, I know most of you already, you know, very familiar with him. Been the, uh, the Dodgers closer for a long time. I don't think a lot of people recognize how great he was in 2021. Had a 2.22 ERA and 1.043 WHIP in 69 innings with 86 strikeouts in 38 saves. He was really good. Last year, I know he had some hiccups earlier in the season, but kind of turned things around and, and had a great 
season, a great 2021. Has a career ERA of 2.37 and a whip of 0.928. So a career whip under one is just outstanding. 1,022 strikeouts in 705 innings with 350 saves. He's second to only Craig Kimbrell and saves among active players. So again, been around for a long time, been closing out games for a long time. Certainly great to have that experience. Plenty of postseason experience as well, pitching with the Dodgers. My only concern with Kenley Jansen is that his walk rate has really started to climb up over the last four years. In fact, it was 12.9% last year, which is just crazy that it was that high, and yet he had a whip of 1.043. You know, if he can calm that down a little bit, get more to his career norms, maybe around 6 or 7% even, uh, that would certainly you know go a long way with him having an even better 2022. Like I said, even with that walk rate, he was still really good in 2021, but that does concern me a little bit. It, is, it has climbed each of the past four seasons. But he has a whip percentage over 30 on all three of his pitches, the cutter, sinker, slider. Obviously, that cutter is a pitch that he is known for, but his sinker and slider were nearly unhittable last year. So he is starting to incorporate you know, some more of those pitchers. As everybody knows, he throws the cutter and knows that's what he's good at. Uh, so the other other pitches become even more important with that. But still, obviously, he's going to throw his cutter you know, 55 60% of the time. Does this make the Braves the best bullpen in all of baseball? You know, I've gone on record before as saying, you know, bullpens are so finicky year to year, but Alex Antopoulos has certainly put together a group on paper that figures to be one of the best in bullpen. You know, maybe Jansen takes a step back. Maybe Will Smith takes a step back, but it's highly unlikely that all of these guys, you know, regress. Um, you know, at the very least, you know, some of them will stay the same. Maybe some of them improve and are even better, but it's highly unlikely you got six, seven guys in this bullpen. It's highly unlikely that they all just collapse. Now, knock on wood, hopefully that doesn't happen. But this is all you can really ask for from Alex Antopoulos to put together a bullpen that going into the season on paper should be one of the best. You know, that really hurt the Braves last year. That was a big question mark coming into the season. You had the guys at the top and and Smith and Matzik and uh, Minter, you know, Luke Jackson, who you felt comfortable with, but they all kind of struggled out of the gate a little bit. And there wasn't enough depth there behind those to really pick that up. And that led to a lot of early losses in the 2021 season. So Alex is trying to make sure that doesn't happen this year, going into the season with a very deep bullpen, which again on paper, you know, Jansen, Smith, Minter, Matzik, Jackson. He's added McHugh as well. You got Kirby Yates possibly coming back to join them, you know, mid-year. Uh, you know, you look at this bullpen, and you also have Darren O'Day, who is, appears to be healthy. He could be a big addition to this as well, another veteran reliever. I mean, it's hard to argue they don't have the best bullpen in baseball. I mean, I know there are some other good ones out there. White Sox have a really good bullpen as well, I know. But this bullpen here, I mean, this is – this is pretty pretty great. Again, on paper, bullpens can be year to year, but Alex Antopoulos has done a great job setting them up for success early in the season. And part of this could be the, the fact that Alex isn't have a, having a ton of luck finding another starting pitcher for the rotation. So why not just shorten the games? Find a way to shorten the games. I mean, you get a lead after five innings with this bullpen, you got to feel pretty good about your chances of closing out the win. So I really like what Alex is doing here. 16 million is a lot to give a relief pitcher, but Kenley's been one of the best relief pitchers in all of baseball for a long time. I understand it. It's a one year deal. Uh, pretty cool story with Kenley Jansen as well. If you haven't checked that out, the fact that he grew up, you know, watching the Braves has the connection uh, with Ozzy Albies as well, them being very close uh, from the same place in Curacao. So uh, a great story. I'm glad to have him here obviously and i just think this bullpen is going to be really fun to watch for once i can watch the end of braves games and not have to sweat it out hopefully uh with the way this bullpen is shaping up we had actual uh, baseball games over the weekend as braves played their first three spring training games and several prospects really stood out 
We'll discuss that next. Look, we're almost into April. Uh, I've I've almost given up all of my New Year's resolutions at this point, but not this year because of Built Bar. They are great for you. They are great tasting as well. All Built Bar is covered in 100% real chocolate, so it doesn't even feel like a diet at all because these taste just like a candy bar, and they're great for you. Low calorie, high protein. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which usually has anywhere from 200 to 300 calories. So uh, again, these are taste just as good as candy bars, but they're much better for you. And if you haven't tried their puffs, you need to try them out as well. Protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy. They're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar. They are a treat. Go to build.com. Check out all the different flavors they have continually coming in. Cookies and cream remains to be one of my favorites. They got the peanut butter brownie as well. But if you like coconut, they got coconut. They got mint, mint brownie. All kinds of flavors there at built.com. So go there now. Use our promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. The Braves played their first three spring training games over the weekend. And look, I was all pumped up, ready to come in here and tell you about Drew Waters and the start that he was off to and how he could perhaps be the answer in center field down the line. Now, not to start the season. I'm not trying to put that narrative out there at all. But if he were to get hot at the beginning of the year in AAA and there was you know, a need in center field, he could definitely handle the position. Switch hitter has all the talent in the world, needs to work on his approach at the plate, something we've known about for a while. Still really young. I mean, it, it feels like Drew Waters has been around forever because he's been a top prospect in the system forever, but he's still really young and still working on his game. But I say all that, and then it's a bit of a bummer because he got pulled from Sunday's game, which would have been his third straight start to start spring training, but he got scratched because of a hamstring injury. So that's a, a real bummer for Drew Waters. Um, look, I've been hard on the kid in saying that, you know, I don't know that he'll ever reach his ceiling, but still rooting for him. I want to see him, you know, become that player that a lot of people thought he could be. And he was off to a good spring training. He he had hits in each of his first two games, had a home run, had a stolen base in there. So, you know, he was looking really good. I uh, also had a walk as well, you know, showing some of that improved plate discipline. I really hope Drew Waters is the answer, especially with Christian Pache being traded off now. Um, you know, I know Michael Harris is coming. I'll talk about him in just a second. But Drew Waters is the one that could really help out this year potentially if he were to get off to a good start in triple a look i think he was in the lineup three straight days simply because this is a short spring training you're going to see roster cuts coming quickly we've already had our first round which again i'm gonna touch on in a second so they want to see what they have in drew waters and i think it's because if they get in a bind you know a month or two from now and they need a center fielder, you know, say Adam Duvall is not working out or he gets injured, you know, Acuna is not ready to take over that spot. Drew Waters might be the next man up. I know you got Guillermo Heredia as well, but Waters, you know, he's on that center field depth chart at this point. I think the Braves want to see what they have in him. If they were to call him up, would he be re ready to handle that level of competition? So, Hopefully the hamstring thing is not anything serious. I know those can be kind of nagging. We'll have to see how that plays out. If he can get back in the lineup sooner rather than later. But I think the Braves really wanted to get a good look at him, see what they have, Andrew Waters, in case he's needed soon. But hate to see that. Like I said, he was off to a really good start, showing some good plate discipline, hitting the ball hard. That's what I want to see from Drew Waters. Hopefully he does get healthy soon, and hopefully he gets off to a great start at Gwinnett. I mentioned Michael Harris, the clear top prospect now in the system with Shea Langoliers and Christian Pache traded to Oakland as part of that package for Matt Olson. Harris played in all three games over the weekend as well. Again, they're trying to get a look at a lot of these young guys before they probably get um, reassigned to minor league camp. Harris had a couple of hits, including an RBI double on, sun on Saturday's game, which was on TV. A nice opposite field swing there off the wall. 
He also stole a couple bags, did get caught stealing, trying to take third on Saturday. Might have been safe, but obviously no replay in spring training. So, you know, he's showing off all the tools that he has there. So great to see that from Michael Harris. And then Vaughn Grisham, he may slot in behind Harris uh, by the time the 2022 season is over in terms of prospect rankings in the system. Certainly made huge jumps last year. Very impressive. He's been hitting the ball hard in spring training after going over two with two strikeouts in his first game. He has three hits uh, since then with a double. Um, so he's really hitting the ball well. Certainly a big season for him possibly coming. Uh, like I said, he's starting to rise up the prospect rankings as well. And I mentioned roster cuts a minute ago. The Braves already made their first round of cuts. Again, a short spring training here. Things are going to move quickly. William Woods got option to Triple A Gwinnett, while Jacil De La Cruz, Darius Vines, Bryce Elder, and Victor Vodnik were reassigned to minor league camp. And I wanted to go ahead and mention that because Elder, Vines, and Vodnik all pitched and De La Cruz pitched in the first game, but Elder, Vines, and Vodnik combined to toss eight hitless innings on Friday in the spring opener. Elder and Vines each went three innings, while Vodnik struck out five in two innings. Um, I watched a couple of Vodnik starts this past year and kind of was erratic. Didn't really impress me in the starts that I watched, but certainly has big stuff. I think he's destined for a bullpen spot. Uh, five strikeouts in two innings. It was the first game in spring. Batters trying to get their timing down. I understand that, but still very impressive stuff. Again, could be a big piece of the bullpen down the road. As far as Elder is concerned, I think he starts at some point for the Braves this year. I think he gets a spot, a spot start in the regular season. He seems polished. He seems ready to me. Uh, he's not going to be a top of the rotation guy. Most likely becomes, you know, a fourth or fifth starter. But I think he's going to be very solid with what he can do. Again, I use that word polished. He just seems so polished on the mound. He knows what, he knows what to do. He knows how to get hitters out. So I think he gets a start. It might be more at some point this season for the Atlanta Braves. And then also, new guy, Matt Olson. He got a hit in each of his first two spring games. And would love to see him get off to a hot start to calm the nerves of you know replacing Freddie Freeman and playing in front of your hometown and the pressure that that kind of brings. Would be great if he could get off to a hot start. I already kind of predicted I would not be surprised if he does get off to a slow start. Just because of all that pressure, I think he'll ultimately settle in. But yeah, if he can get going early, and it doesn't probably doesn't help. You got that first series early in the year at at at, at the Dodgers in LA, and you're gonna already start hearing the narratives comparing him, you know, to Freddie. I don't know if that helps or hurts things. Hopefully, you know, he has a better headspace uh, in that and can just be calm and be able to play his game as he said you know he said he's going to be matt olson i hope he can keep that mindset and like i said i just i think it would be great if he could get off to a, a good start to kind of ease that pressure some of the biggest free agents out there came off the board over the weekend which one were the braves linked to that we could see in atlanta soon we'll discuss that next it is that time of year again as college basketball's tournament is finally upon us. Got March Madness, the NCAA tournament going on right now. Unfortunately, my Auburn Tigers bowed out a lot earlier than I was hoping, but that is still going on. Obviously, March Madness, very fun time of year, as long uh, going along with the start of the Major League Baseball season. From all the latest odds, contests, and player props, betonline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info, Bet Online remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sport wagering information needs, including live betting in your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. So I talked about some big signings over the weekend. The Braves after the Kenley Jansen signing, also added former Brave Phil Goslin on a minor league deal. The utility player and former Brave is 33 years old and has a career slash line of 261, 314, 362. Spent last year with the Angels and slash 261 um, as well with seven home runs and 345 at bats. Always great to have some minor league depth with big league experience in case of injuries. Expect to see more moves like this as 
the spring training goes along and you have players cut and stuff like that, I expect Alex to make some more moves um, along that 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 same path uh, to try to add some depth there. Um, also, in other news around the league, Jorge Soler signed with the Marlins for three years, $36 million. I know a lot of Braves fans were hoping that there would be a return there for him, but that was not in the cards right now. Um, there are opt-outs after his first and second year, so it's possible he hits the market again next offseason. Also a chance the Braves make a trade for him during the season. I wouldn't mind that. Um, it just didn't make a ton of sense right now with the way the lineup is constructed to add Jorge Soler, having him and Marcelo Ozuna on the roster is kind of redundant in my opinion. I would prefer Soler over Ozuna, but nothing we can do about that at the moment. But we'll get to see a ton of Jorge Soler now that he is with Miami. Certainly uh, loved having him in Atlanta, certainly with what he did in the playoffs in the World Series. So good for Jorge. Uh, I guess that contract has a chance to be a free agent again next season or next offseason if he wants to. Also, the Phillies signed Nick Castellanos, assembling one of the best offenses in baseball over there in Philadelphia with Kyle Schwarber also added this offseason, but also quite possibly one of the worst defenses in all of baseball. So that'll be something to keep an eye on for sure. Um, Carlos Correa signed a three-year deal worth 105.3 million with the Minnesota Twins. Kind of a shocker there. He also has opt-outs after the first two seasons, so very well could hit free agency again next offseason. Apparently, his agent, Scott Boris, had conversations with the Braves before the deal was done. An article from Ken Rosenthal on The Athletic says Boris floated the same contract idea to the Braves that he ultimately signed with the Twins, with the Braves obviously decided to turn that down, but Rosenthal thinks that could be setting up future talks next offseason if Correa does become a free agent. Obviously, this is the last year for Dansby Swanson to be under contract. Could lead to a pretty good but small uh, free agent class at shortstop next year with Correa. Again, if he opts out, Trey Turner and Dansby Swanson. So we'll see what plays out there. I'm not the biggest Carlos Correa fan, but obviously he is a great player and a great talent. Uh, he's nine months younger than Dansby Swanson. Um, so we'll start to see where that leads to. I have a, it's hard for me to believe that that's the way that Alex and Thomas would go, but the way he's spending money right now, who, who knows what he's planning to do. Um, but I just thought that was interesting that the Braves were, you know, kind of involved in those conversations. We'll have to see what happens next off season. If Correa does opt out and Trevor story, another shortstop ended up going to the Boston Red Sox. Uh, as an interesting move there. Xander Bogarts, for them, he he has the ability to opt out next offseason as well and become a free agent. So it could be a really solid free agent class at shortstop again next offseason. The Braves also were said to have checked in on Craig Kimbrell before signing Kenley Jansen. That's very interesting. I don't know what that trade necessarily would have looked at looked like. Uh, you know, if that were more of a salary dump for the White Sox or they're actually looking for a solid prospect package. But it does tell me that Alex is out there active in the trade market, you know, willing to make another big trade if he was in discussions for Craig Kimbrell. So hopefully that's what he's doing as well, out there looking for starting pitching. I know Alex and Tablis is always busy, always looking for ways to improve the team. And Alex, we trust for sure. But he was looking at least at bringing back Craig Kimbrell, which would have been pretty cool uh, for sure. But I think I'm happy with the Kinley Jansen signing as well. That money pretty much was even as well between the two. So glad that we got Kenley Jansen on board. That pretty much wraps up most of the big free agents left on the board. So I think we're ready to start doing some season preview stuff. Next episode, we're going to look at some spring training battles. Then we likely will start getting into some season preview talk as well as covering all of the spring training games that are going on. But that will do it. For this episode of Locked On Braves, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves. You can follow me at Shortstop Ball on Twitter as well. Please make sure you subscribe to your podcast wherever you get your podcast. Subscribe to us on YouTube as well. And we will talk to you next time.